I'm going to briefly talk about supplementation because people have a lot of questions about supplementation. And here's my thoughts on supplementation. The best supplement is no supplement, right? You should be getting your nutrients from your food. If your goal is to eat a crappy diet and then take a bunch of supplements to try to stay alive, that's a bad plan, okay? I have people that I know that are on that plan. They just think, I'll exercise a whole bunch to burn off those calories and I look pretty, right? And I'll just take a whole bunch of vitamins so that I can, you right? wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> you're still getting all the damage from all the poisons that you're putting into your body, right? But that being said, when I look at the state of our food, how we grow it, how we make it, well, all those situations, there's four basic supplements that I think are required in order to be sufficient, right, in what you need. And so here's what they are. An omega-3 fatty acid, right? Most Americans don't need to be taking an omega-6, okay? Because you're getting omega-6s. The average American diet is about 30 to 1, omega-6 to omega-3. It should be 2 to 1 or 1 to 1. Okay? Are you with me? So where are you getting the omega-6s? Chips, crackers, pastas, breads, whole grain granola bars, Cheerios. Are you with me? Omega-6s. All right? So why do we call them EFAs, essential fatty acids? Anytime you see the word essential when you're talking about nutrition, essential means your body can't make it, you have to ingest it. Right? You with me? So it's essential that you eat it. Right? Well, how many people are eating organic grass-fed meats and a sufficient amount of avocados, olive oils, coconut oils, nuts? Not too many. Right? Um, when we study the American diet, for the most part, we're all deficient in omega-3 fatty acids. So even if you eat a great diet and you're thinking about all these things, I'm saying that you're still deficient in omega-3 fatty acids. Next is vitamin D, okay? Um, the literature pretty much supports the fact that overall anybody living north of Atlanta, and we're pretty well north of Atlanta, needs vitamin D supplementation. And vitamin D is not a vitamin, it's actually a hormone, but we'll keep that relatively simple right now and we're not gonna get into that. But um, we have been taught in America that the sun is bad. So what, and let's use some logic on that. If the sun causes cancer, do the people at the equator get the most sun? So they should all have cancer, right? Is their incidence of skin cancer less or greater than ours? Say less, right? The sun does not cause cancer, all right? The sun is essential for your body making vitamin D. But in America, we slob ourselves up, right, with uh, sunblock so that we can't get any vitamin D from the sun, right? And then we have jobs where we work inside. And when we are outside, we typically have shorts on and shirts on. So we're, we're sort of deficient in vitamin D. Talk to any primary care physician that's doing blood work on people on a very regular basis, and they'll tell you that most of their adults are deficient in vitamin D, right? So there's a couple sources that you can get vitamin D. One is cod liver oil. The other is lanolin, which means it comes from sheep. And the, and the one that I use is made from lanolin, okay? So essential fatty acids, you're supplementing with those and vitamin D you're supplementing with those. The other thing that we need to supplement with are bugs, probiotics, bacteria. That's a scary word, right? Because we thought that bacteria are bad. Here's what we know. We know that you have more bacteria in your body than you do cells. How about that? Kind of interesting. We call it our microbiome now. Have you heard that word or read about that word at all? So it's, it's, it's the relationship that we live in between our microorganisms and our cells that's required to keep us healthy. And what has happened is, is we are, have over-sanitized our lives. Very few people can make it out of childhood without copious amounts of antibiotics being dumped into their body. And they have very few microorganisms, healthy, good microorganisms, colonating their body properly. And so we have to ingest them, right? Um, Think about how our ancestors would have washed their food. They probably would have went to a stream, right? And they would have washed it there and they would have ate it. Do you think there was any bacteria in that stream? Do you think there was any bacteria on those fruits and vegetables that they were consuming? And they were replenishing their system and lining their gut, right? With health grow microorgan microorganisms all the time. So essential fatty acids, vitamin D, and probiotics, right? I prefer a probiotic not from dairy. If you think you're gonna eat enough Activia to fill up your body with healthy bacteria, 
please try something else, okay? Um, you, don't want, you don't want dairy sources of bacteria being loaded into your body, all right? You want a non-dairy form of probiotics, preferably in my opinion, right? Um, and the last thing is, is a multivitamin of some point. And I'm a proponent of juicing. Um, I'll give you a DVD that we made on juicing. Um, that's the best way to get a multivitamin. So if you're willing to juice, um, I don't use juicing as a meal replacement. I use juicing as a multivitamin. Are you with me? So it's live living food that I can go, right? And juice and I can put carrots and celery and cucumbers and ginger and mint and whatever else I like to put in there and I can juice it and drink a great big glass of that, right? And that's my, that's my multivitamin. If you're not gonna do that, then I recommend a whole food, um, grain-free, gluten-free, real multivitamin.